Now that we've developed the main properties of natural logarithm, we want to take another look at the derivative. In our approach here, if I have x greater than zero, then we define natural log of x as a definite integral as t goes from one to x, of one over t with respect to t. To get the derivative, we invoke the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which says, if we have a one here and an x here, to take the derivative with respect to x, we just take the integrand, replace the t with an x. So we'll get a one over x. Now, could have developed natural log in a completely different way. So in pre-calculus, you may have seen natural log as a function that returns exponents. If we consider that definition, we could reconstruct the three properties that we've already developed. So we'd have that natural log of e is equal to one, natural log of a quotient is equal to a difference of natural logs, and natural log of a number to an exponent, just equal to, okay, you bring the exponent down and then take the natural log. So what we'll do here, I'm just gonna compute the derivative using the definition as a slope of a tangent line. We just wanna verify that we wind up getting back one over x. So our proof is gonna be completely circular. It's just gonna be a verification. Now, definition of derivative of the slope of a tangent line, what do we do? Well, we could draw in our graph, so it's a graph of natural log. We're going to pick a point x, and then we'll pick another point very close to our x. So I'll call that x plus h, where h is a number very close to zero. We draw in our triangle, okay, so these points are on the graph. And then we want to get the slope of this secant line, so it's going to be the rise over the run. The rise is going to be natural log of x plus h, minus natural log of x. The run is gonna be x plus h minus x, which is just gonna be h. So here's the slope of our secant line. And I take the limit as we let h go down to zero. So that's gonna be the definition of our derivative. Now, for this expression here, we just wanna apply the logarithm rules and see where we wind up. So, first step, we could use our quotient rule to bring this difference into one logarithm. So we'll get x plus h over x. Bring the one over h out in front. Okay, then we can simplify this to a one plus h over x. That'll move the exponent up as one over h. So now we have this limit here. For our next step, we note natural log is continuous on its domain. So we can push this limit through to the inside. To compute the inside limit, we need more technique than we get in calculus. So at the end, we'll just check at a few points. Now, the claim will be that this limit is equal to e to the one over x. With that, we could use our exponent rule to bring the one over x down in front, and then natural log of e is equal to one. So we finish up with one over x as expected. Now, for this limit here, we'll just check it at a few points. So we'll use x equal to a half, one, and two. Now, if we're taking a limit, here we have h going to zero. So if I wanted to approximate the limit, knowing that it exists, we would just choose very small values for h. So I'm gonna take h equal to 0 0.001 and put it into our expression here. Now. When we do that with x equal to a half, out comes roughly 7.37 from my calculator, and that's in the ballpark of e squared. If we do it with a one, we have 2.72, which is close to e to the one, or just e. Then if we put in with a two, we get roughly 1.65, which is close to e to the one half. So this is at least believable on the points that we check.